Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Digby. This is going to be game three between Adame and Agistol, part of Chobo League. This is on BSL Aid Runner, which I think is one of their custom maps. Upper left hand corner, Purple Protoss. I like the alliteration. Awesome alliteration. Although awesome and alliteration don't really, whatever. You get what I'm saying. Once again, is the pink Zerg. We have Agistol bottom left hand corner. <laughs> Once again, if you guys are interested in participating in BSL, I highly recommend it. Uh, CPL just finished up, so I, I I'm wondering if they can they coordinate that exactly between the two. CPL, another great place to go, by the way, for educational brood war resources. I actually tried to participate in this last season of CPL. The team I was on won, by the way. Special uh, shout out to IKEA Build Orders and amazing people there. Master A, I think, was our head coach guy, who which he also is casting um, a lot of these matches for BSL. Check him out. Actually, I should do. I will link in all of these videos where you can catch out, uh, catch all the other people. Say NSC is also casting a lot of these games. Master Race casting these from Carlin from CPL, um, and Rogues Gallery is uh, casting these. Seeing a Probe Scout upper right hand corner once again. No Forge Fast expand. We are seeing a Gateway First build. It's interesting because I'm used to seeing out of this sort of style like two early Gateway and then Zealot, just direct Zealot pressure, not this kind of pushed back. Uh, get a Corsair out delay block ramp this is going to be an interesting one because i think you can block this ramp with a handful of zealots but it can be a little bit tricky with the the, Zerl the uh, zealot legs uh, with the zergling sneaking through there i was able to say it i think this was an over pool once again from agistal bottom left hand corner as we see the overlord supply and a spawning pool confirms it probe making its way to the bottom right hand corner overlord is also making its bottom right hand corner so there is a chance that when these two see each other, they will have a good idea of where each other are at, and we might see an adjustment. Pro or drone making its way. Okay, that drone is going to scout. Second drone is going to go ahead and plop down that follow up hatchery. Let's see, does he adjust? Yes, he's going upper left hand corner. Um, although he wouldn't have had as, as good idea. Point being, he's, I think he's going to get the scout off. First sell it moving across. It's not going to be enough to block this ramp. And again, I wanted to see it move down and be aggressive. Maybe it is. I don't think it is, though. I think they can slip through this corner. We will know momentarily. Three probes on gas, so we're not going to see any sort of fast push to... So we are going to see more tech-based build. We're not going to see a fast push to additional nexus. So I guess that zealot does blockade. Huh. Go figure. One zealot blocks that from a scout. Good to know. Today I learned. Probe is going to get that scouting information opposite corner. Four zerglings trying to sneak through extractor being built. And it looks like these additional... So no additional Zerglings being built. We're just going to stick with that initial four. And two Zelts still sitting on the front. Again, just trying to deny that scouting information. I'm hoping what we see from Adame here is now that he knows he's got that scout denied, maybe we'll see a follow-up with something sneaky. It is possible, because you can get that Cybernetic score, that early Dragoon, uh, do things that way. But... The one thing he is doing by not applying zealot pressure and kind of going for a little bit of a later thing, he is basically getting very early game map control over to Agistol if you wanted to just plop down, especially on kind of areas, I guess it's not as prevalent on this map, but areas where you'd have like ramps and whatnot. Um, you can get the ramps uh, covered by sun colonies, things like that, establish early base. Zerglings attack, being annoying, attacking that lurker egg to open up the front. One zergling trying to chase down that probe. Overlord slowly making its way across. We are seeing a Stargate, so this is going to be one gate, Stargate, Cybernetic score. Ugh, Zealot trying to push. Not able to get a kill yet, but is able to weaken that initial Zergling. That is three. These three Zealots should be able to bully these Zerglings out. Citadel of Doom going down. So I think we're going to see, yeah, that similar build with the early Zealot leg speed and the Corsair attack. I think Agisil has a good handle on it. He's getting the Hydralis done down. He's sticking to two bases, rather than uh, getting a third hatchery inside of his main. Should have plenty of units to deal with this. This Overlord probably going to die, but it sacrificed its life for the Horde. For the Horde? Are the Orc the equivalent of Zerg in this? Shouldn't be the Horde. For the Swarm? For the Swarm. Swarm, Horde, very similar, right? I'm not off on this. But really, when you think about it, Zerg... I think the Zerg natural color is kind of pink or purplish, yeah? With all the creep and whatnot. But, I don't know. You guys tell me. Racial equivalence across the... Maybe there is no one-to-one -one correlation. But Horde and Swarm, it just... I, I can't help but say that, you know? 
movement speed being upgraded by these hydralisks look like the zerglings are going to do a swing around so they might be able to sneak into the base once again but that leaves zero defenses on this front door so these zealots are just going to wide walk march and i think wow is this going to be game wide walk march straight into the main completely unopposed and the drones are not flooding their way to the natural expansion okay now they're moving their way across some zerglings being built some additional zerglings and hydralisks the, the one counter from this is is now that the Zealots are here, they might be at a lost pin. And this is where I wish I could get rid of the... Or can I get rid of it? Uh, <laughs> I wish I could get rid of this swiftly. I feel like I'm going to mess up the cameras more than anything else. This is the danger of doing this sort of early build. So Corsair is working on some overlords. But I still feel like this is plenty of units uh, to go ahead and take out these four Zealots. Not if they're not grouped and going in piecemeal like that. So I take it back. The four Zealots just rocking the units that were there and I honestly I'm going to chalk that up to a, a bit of bad micromanagement and also just going in and taking them one at a time. Corsair uh, being pecked away at by that Hydalus and I feel like there's an opportunity for Agistil just with reinforcements and engaging that carefully to to finish this off. The Zealot being pinned in and taken out. Ooh, Overlord still getting pecked away at. There's still two Hydalus out here in the main and now if Agistil just Pulls a lot of his stuff here, just kind of harasses these zealots whenever they're trying to attack anything. He should be he should be fine. Some more units are trying to peel their way in, but that Sutton Colony on the front plus the reinforcements once they take care of these zealots should be fine. This is the engagement I was hoping to see. The Zerglings up on front, the Hydralisks attacking from behind. Um, and just, yeah, rather than, I, I see what happened. He was using his own SimCity against him. The drones moving their way back across. And this puts Adame in a really difficult scenario. He is getting his natural expansion up. He is getting his cannon. I don't think he really got that many drones, though. They're even in overall worker count, which is not where you want to be as a Protoss. He does have he does have Psystorm building. He does have his Templar archives up. He was able to disrupt a lot of mining. Um, but... The supply count, ooh, does have a Dark Templar taking out a couple Zerglings on the front as well. Let's see if these Zerglings are able to... Mm, they are going to be able to slip through to get additional scouting information. Not that they need it. They already got killed by that Dark Templar. Just going to go ahead and... Wow, they're going to get bonus probe kills on top of everything else. Going to be able to sneak and take that probe one-on-one -on -one as well. Dark Templar trying to make his way forward. Isn't going to get a lot accomplished there. Should be able to take this hatchery out at the mineral only. But once again, I feel like Adge is still in a pretty good position. Um... That attack wasn't as crippling as I think Adame hoped. Looks like some drones. I must have missed something. I'm not sure if that was a misclick or something like that. Because Dark Templar is here, but I don't think he managed to get in the main. I might have missed something around the minimap. You guys can check by rewinding the video. Robotics facility building. He's wait he's going to need observers or something like that to start crawling across the map. He was able again to disrupt this middle only, but Agistil should be able to just pump drones. Uh, pump all the drones and then army as he wants. Overlord speed is making its way. Spire is also being built. That's the other critical thing. That's one piece that Agistil's kind of skipped here. But when you have three hatcheries and you have both gases running, you can get that spire up. And that tends to be air control is one thing that Protoss oftentimes has trouble with. One Corsair has been produced, but there's still no cannons defending the main. There's still no uh, cannons defending that natural expansion. So they could get a lot of work done if we just saw, you know, a handful of mutos out in the air. It is about two-thirds finished. We'll see what happens once it's out there. Corsair winding up to do some damage, just passing by. And I think this is mostly for scouting information more than anything else. A High Templar, I think, was misrallied out on the front. And that, ugh, I think this Corsair might actually just get wiped out by these Hydalisks. If they do a cutoff route here, they might be able to get it. It looks like they're... maybe not. Dark Templar has got three kills. And I think those three kills were mostly in drones trying to come out and plant additional hatcheries. So at least small victories here for Adame. But I still am concerned about his tech lead, his probe saturation overall, his raw army count. He does have High Templar here with Storm. But as soon as those Storms are expended, he really... Oh, and he's actually going to get a shuttle and move out with this. Thing is, is if Agistil just switches to pure macro, which looks like he's kind of winding up to do so. He's got an Evolution Chamber hatchery building it natural, so he's going to be sitting at four. Are we seeing... Oh, yeah. So seeing Mutalisks. And this is where it's going to get really, really challenging for Adame to stay in this match, I think, because he hasn't pupped Corsairs this entire time. If we do see significant numbers of Mutalisks, this is a lot of vulnerable base. A lot of vulnerable base. And that's already four Mutalisks out. Five is really the count you want to see, I think, to one-shot probes. Some Overlords moving across. These... 
drones being annoying and distance mining. They'll correct themselves momentarily. He's going to go ahead and scout out uh, additional things, but this probe line is completely defenseless. The thing that would be able to defend them were the this shuttle. And we did... Okay, I missed a Psy Storm. Oof. That actually might get Adame back in this match, because that Psy Storm looked like it killed a significant amount of drones. He's going to go ahead and move his way around, try to get another Psy Storm. And actually, he's done a good job decimating that probe count. But while that's happening, this is happening. And the thing is, is Zerg, they get those larvae so quickly, they can rebuild drones like nothing. It takes a long time to rebuild these these probes and this is going to be a huge swing both directions and again i feel like adame is going to have is going to end up being behind overall that high templar just sitting on the low ground um this corsair was going to be maybe the only thing that could defend another another corsair being built but it's going to get uh, quickly taken out there's that dragoon but it's going to have to fight some city and that that natural expansion is completely bare and more probes are getting taken out still no third to speak of are we going to see a size? Oh, that High Templar going to get wiped out. Oh, size storming himself and a lot of those probes. I think those probes got lucky and were able to dodge a little bit of storm overall. This High Templar has still been chilling here. Okay, there he's going to walk in. Going to be able to get some additional drones. Six kills finally before he's cleaned up. Ugh. <laughs> Five hatcheries up. I still feel, uh, and I have been saying this a lot, I feel like I just still, still in a clean position here. I think because there was so much probe saturation and just continual probes being built from Adame uh, in his main, and I think in anticipation of maybe eventually taking a third, he was actually able to resupply fairly quickly. So a little bit less dev uh, devastating than it would have been otherwise. He's going to be able to drop this High Templar, or sorry, this Dark Templar and this High Templar, getting another storm off the high ground. Con and actually Adame sneaking back into this match with the consistent harassment of these uh, probes and the Dark Templar in the main, if he just sits on that, there is an Overlord here. Scourge maybe going to try to hunt down something. Actually, might finally take that Corsair out. But it's it's kept Agistol, uh more or less supply pinned. He's hoping to take this 6 o'clock base, it looks like. He, more or less forcing him to, rather than build army, rebuild these uh, drone lines. Now I'm waiting for that Dark Templar. There it is. Dark Templar's already got 6 kills. Sorry, I, keep, I feel like the one moment I'm moving away in a lot of these matches is the one moment they're deciding to engage. Working on that Spire, I think this will be cleaned up momentarily. He needs to get a move on, though, and get some... For wow, these Hydros are so slow, and there's no Overlord overhead. Okay, finally the Overlord moving into position. I think he's going to get the Spire. This is going to be close. There's the initial Hydralisks coming in. They are on attack move. It's going to be 19. Got it. Got it right on death. So that's a big win. At least he doesn't have to worry about additional... Oof, he doesn't have to worry about additional mutilisks. This game, I tell you. <laughs> Heart pounding here and there. Adame still sitting on two bases. I think these are some probes. I think this is a miss rally and probes are going in the upper left hand corner. And that is a lot of probes that aren't mining. Still is nowhere near establishing his third. This is kind of a skeleton contained crew from Agistol. Agistol mostly keeping the bulk of his forces just because of, I think, the sheer amount of harassment he's had to suffer trying to be a little bit more defensive. He's taking the six o'clock base. Adame moving out with a very Dragoon-heavy attack force. And an Observer. He's got everything he needs to kind of deal with this. Supply count actually in Adame's favor. Plus, he has level 1 weapons going against, uh, I guess, level 1 attack opposite corner from Zerg. So about even on the overall, which I think gives a slight edge because of the Zealot double attack, depending on how things engage to Protoss overall. Three Corsairs in position. This High Templar does not have a lot of Storm, which could be a significant factor. More Hydralis, just a single control group. Look, I'm looking for the additional attack forces, and it's just kind of piecemeal one at a time, these control groups that are going out to engage us, unfortunately, and not engaging on kind of the high ground position that you really want, or peeling off the Zealots to kind of work against them at the slow range. This is actually a significant enough attack force that might be able to do something significant with some... The thing is, is it would have to be something significant with some Psy Storms, and there's just... Only one storm to speak of. Adame moving into the middle of the map. I think maybe hoping to catch a base that was being produced somewhere out in space. He does have some degree of map control. That's going to allow him to go ahead and take his mineral only finally. Uh, really what I think he wants is to try to take that 12. He's going to try to be greedy and take both. It is up to Agistol to punish this. And actually swinging all the way around is going to be able to melt... This 6 o'clock, if he can get in position on it, some Hydralis is delaying that attack, and it looks like some additional reinforcements trying to engage from the opposite corner. Corsairs are there. Wow. Everything is here, and this is not where you want to be as Agistol. Just getting your reinforcements in position. Some storms from behind wiping out anything that might be a pincer attack. The drones 
peeling out before they're getting wiped out. But I think Adame might have an opportunity to... Well, maybe not. Wasn't able to get all the units in position like I think he initially hoped. Might be able to take some of these soft overlord targets if he can reposition those Corsairs. But the Hydralis made it in time. Six o'clock base stands. Only a sunken colony to speak of. And Agistil did a good job of getting his drones out of position and re-engaging. Agistil, feeling map control, is starting to press forward and hunt down these Dragoons. He has another Zergling army sweeping across to the mineral only. They're going to run into these cannons, but they're getting right on top of those cannons. A little bit of side storm. Honestly, I'm not sure that side storm was entirely worth it. I would want to see... Uh, usually you want to kind of save it for something else and have zealots there dealing with that plus everything else. Additional cannons being try, uh, trying to cap this 12 o'clock base for Adame. Some Hydralisks going to be just in time to see all of that being built. And I think there this is perfect storm bait. Let's see if he can get there to do it. Uh, High Templar isn't quite there to get that nice storm off. He might lose that Corsair if he's not careful. Things resetting. Now I think it's anybody's game. Uh, I think Adame is in a slight advantage because he's at four bases versus four bases, plus this four o'clock base now just being taken. Single Zergling trying to check that upper end corner just to make sure anything's there. Once this base gets mining, of course, he does want to make sure he starts mining that gas. Uh, Agistal, level one weapons, level one carapace, Kind of get a look at the upgrades here. Level two weapons, opposite corner. I'm wondering if, unironically, Arbiter might be good here. I don't know if we'll see it or not. Armor being built, drones being moved from this empty main. Uh, probably, let's see if they get transferred to, I don't want to call this the third. Technically, this is the for getting transferred to the fourth. Agistal sticking mostly with Hydralisk at this stage. Supply count is even. Getting... Extended Overlord range, plopping down an Ultra's Cavern. Agistil sitting on pretty... This is the big difference, I think, in this match. Is Even though they're at even supply, look at the banks. Agistil has a much more sizable bank. He's got a lot of units on the ground. And right now, because Adame is not really in a position... Well, we'll see. He's going to hop up here. If there is too high Templar with these cannons, I'd be like, this might be more of an impenetrable point. But the Hydra's diving in, able to take out one cannon. More Scythe Storm melting, more cannons taken out. Let's see if they're able to just dive on this Nexus, take it out. That could be a big swing this match. Yeah, this 12 o'clock base. Looks like these Zerglings are going to be able to wipe it out. I think... I don't think we've got the Adrenal upgrade just yet. Units coming in and providing support, replopping a Nexus immediately, but not before all of that mining was interrupted. And they're going to be distance mining for a bit. Adame needs to be careful that his units don't come out piecemeal versus an attack force waiting for an ambush or something along those lines. Overlord kind of camping there just to make sure that that 9 o'clock's being, not being taken. Main is starting to look thin for Agistol, but he is sitting at 5 bases versus the 3 bases of Adame. Adame, though, about even in supply count. He still has a sizable upgrade advantage. It's going to come down to Psy Storms. Uh, unit, uh, basically map positioning. Looks like another base being taken bottom right. Agistil doing what he needs to do, though, I think. Just taking the bases he wants, macroing up. He still has a significant bank, even at the even supply counts. Mostly his problem has just been having the army grouped up where he needs it. Archon's diving in, getting on top of the sunken colonies before they even are morphed in. Might be able to wipe out everything at this 4 o'clock. More units moving across. It looks like to try to reinforce this. That is a lot of Archons. No Psy Storm to speak of yet from either High Templar, so they are going to be able to wipe out reinforcements should they be reproduced. I think this is a sack base, but that is a lot of pink coming from the north. Unfortunately, the pink from coming from the north is going to be coming in right on top of those High Templars. Some, ooh, nice side storm on top of three lurkers. So this base is going to get taken out, but are the rest of the units going to be able to get out otherwise? I don't see an observer anywhere here. So I think they are eventually going to die. Should be able to take out, are able to take out the hatchery. Zerglings flooding in. So now, Agistil, yeah, losing an additional base. Adame, mm. the one thing, though, is I look at the supply counts now off that turn. Because of that bank he had, you can see the supply shift is still in Agistil's favor. So lost the base, but still was able to take out that army. No swarm, and unfortunately, these Zerglings again coming in, uh, rather as a gather group, just coming in one at a time. Still might be enough. Sidestorm missing them primarily. These are now Adrenal up. I, nope, still not Adrenal Upgraded. Ultras there to just absorb damage, basically. And more, zing, more Zerglings flooding up. And Agis still going to do, okay, you take out my base, I'm going to take out yours. Go ahead and storm my Ultralisk. You're going to lose your Zealots and your Dragoon that you stormed underneath that as well. Everything getting wiped out at 12 o'clock. I don't think the probes are going to get out this time. And, oof. 
that was a big swing because that essentially puts Adame down to two functional bases. And I think that is going to be GG. Moving the Observers and some additional defenses with an Ultralisk just kind of like... I think this is mostly like the Ultralisk doesn't care. It's like, yeah, I'll die, but you're not long for life either. Guess, uh, guess what? My buddies are around the corner and I'm happy. This is how Zerg work. Actually, I think the mythology of the Zerg is simple is uh, similar to the Tyranid. I think they're based... I think Brood War is originally meant to be a Warhammer 40k game. I think that is the lore of it. But then like the the copyright stuff fell through. Zerg is moving in. But essentially, they would take over plants, just turn into goo, and then reconstitute and leave the planet. I think that's how Zerg work as well. Maybe not. Maybe not according to StarCraft mythology. But point being, I think that Ultralisk is happy to die. Mostly brainless anyway. As long as he is killing stuff, feels like his life is complete. Speaking of which, GG. Agistool is going to advance to the winner's match. We're going to see Adame in the loser's match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you want to see these live cast, you'll be able to see them at uh, Twitch TV backslash DiggitySC. And thank you to everybody that is in my live audience for watching this, keeping up with it. Keeps me honest, so I'm not starting and restopping these games. Being a little too perfectionistic in the overall matches and whatnot. Anyway, good match to both these guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.